Canada reminds us, maybe before we didn't know, that Corey is afraid to go to school, the store, and to roller skate. He cries a lot for a boy of eight, but now we know each day is true that other girls and boys cry too. They cry for us to lend a hand. It's time for us to take a stand. And little Maria's window screen, yeah, it keeps out flies and other things, but she knows to duck her head when she prays each night for bed. Because through those windows come some things that shatter little children's dreams. For some, the hourglass is out of sand. It's time for us to take a stand. And Charlie's deepest secret wishes is for someone to smother him with kisses and squeeze and hug him tight, so tight, while he pretends to put up a fight, or at least for someone to be at home. Who misses him? He's so alone. Who allowed this child forsaken land? Look in the mirror, take a stand. And on the Sabbath when we pray, to our God we often say, oh Jesus, Mohammed, Abraham, I come to better understand how to, to love, to learn, and to give, and live the life that you taught to live. In faith we must join hand in hand. Suffer the children, take a stand. Because in Flint tonight some child will go to bed no food, no place to lay their head, no hand to hold, no lap to sit, to give slobbery kisses from slobbery lips. So you and I, we must succeed in this crusade, this holy deed, to say to the children in our land, have hope, we're here, take a stand. Good afternoon. The photo behind me represents me. The individuals holding me up represent my village. They represent my pastor. They represent mentors in my life, such as Gail Ganactis and Sylvester Jones. They represent all of the individuals who it took to raise a child. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard the old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Some contest, however, that it does not take a village to raise a child, but it takes a family. The sad thing is, every child doesn't have a family. So that leaves the village. And in order for the village to function properly, it must raise the children, and it must be nurtured. Because if we do not raise the children, then we can't form economic security. If we don't raise the children, then we can't form healthy families. If we don't raise the children, then we can't send them to learnable schools, and we run the risk of getting caught in what I call the treadmill theory, running nowhere, fast. This is where we have to get creative nurturing the village. So yes, it does take a village to raise a child if you'll embrace that, at least for my talk at least. Let's talk about nurturing the village. Nurturing the village. All being born in different parts of the world, we are born in different villages. And every village is in a good village, and every villager is in a good villager. This is why the nurturing process is so important. When I was in the fourth grade um, in elementary school, and Yes, that is a picture of my actual elementary school. Um, during what was supposed to be a normal day, my teacher called me an endangered species. Yes, he told me to my face that I was an endangered species. At the time, I thought he was calling me some type of animal. I really didn't understand, but what he was saying was that the American dream didn't have a face in it that looked like mine. He was saying that school for me was a waste of time because I was a young black male. Continuing on, I saw this teacher when I was in the 12th grade at the library, and we bumped into each other. He said, well, 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 David McGee, what are you doing here? I said, what does it look like I'm doing here? I'm studying. He said, oh, really? I thought you'd be then dropped out by now. True story. Now, I had to shift in my approach and realize that that teacher didn't create me. And even though he was in the village that I was being raised in, he wasn't a good villager. But truth be told, the not-so-good villagers allow us to build our persistence. The not-so-good villagers allow us to build our perspective. The not-so-good villagers allow us to build our perseverance in life, even if somebody tries to kill our dreams. So as we close out this TED conference, allow me to talk about three things when we think about nurturing the village. The first I want to focus on is the person in the village. And unless you had it mistaken, that is you. The person in the village is you. 
And in thinking about your role as the person in the village, I want to encourage you to shift in your approach. Shift in your approach and be creative. Um, I'm reminded of a, an encounter I had with one of my mentors from afar, Dr. Calvin Mackey, a few months ago when we were coming back from, a, I was in a, a conference in Florida, and we were catching our connecting flight to Atlanta so he could go on to Louisiana and I could go on to Flint, come on to Flint. And we were sitting having a slice of pizza, and I asked Dr. Mackey an important question. I said, Dr. Mackey, what would you tell a younger version of yourself? He said, David, I would tell him that the person that outthinks you rules you. And I said, what? He said, the person that outthinks you rules you. And I said, explain that. And I had a bottle of water. He said, David, what do you see? I said, it's a bottle of water. He said, David, what do you see? I said, Dr. Mackey, it's a bottle of water. He asked me a third time. He said, David, what did you see? I said, it's a bottle of water that I drunk out of. And he said, no, that's the problem. The person that outthinks you rules you. When I look at this, I see a business. When I look at this, I see a company that made the bottle. I see a company that made the glue to make sure that the label sticks on the bottle. I see a company that makes the top, but yet each and every day you look at it as a bottle of water. David, you must shift in your approach. I thought about that the whole plane ride back home. And I'm reminded of this quote. Why build these cities glorious if man unbuilded goes? In vain we build the world unless the builder also grows. So as we stand here in this fine institution of engineering, as we hear all of the TED Talks and we get all excited in our minds as far as innovation and things are concerned, yes, we can go and build buildings, we can go and create things, but what good is it if we don't build people? What good is it if we don't build people? Learn. Gain access to the ideas, connections, and evidence needed to make an impact in your village. Adapt. This is going beyond your current comfort level. Shifting your approach is the only way the village will shift. Connect. We are the people who can make a difference, ladies and gentlemen, but those who will be affected by the difference that we make need to be a part of the decision-making process. Lastly, we must grow. Flint was once the hotbed for education and automotive. That is not the case anymore. So we must shift in our approach and change the way we think, and that will in turn change the way that we live. The second point I want to make, oh, I'm sorry. In other words, we are the ones that we've been waiting on the people in the village. After we accept our role as the person in the village, we must focus on the, the most important asset in our village, the children. We must focus on the children. Cornell West once said, you can't lead the people if you don't love the people, and you can't save the people if you don't serve the people. Ask yourself, what are you doing to serve the younger generation? What are you doing to serve the younger generation? Because no matter what it is that you or I do, if we don't leave this world in a good shape for them, we've wasted our time. Whether we like our young people's behavior or not, in many ways they're facing adversities. Adversities in ways that we forgot that we faced. They have to overcome things day in and day out, day in and day out, and yet they find a way to succeed. They find a way to succeed. So let me paint this story a little bit clearer for you. Dr. Frederick Haynes reminds me of this. For those of you all who can embrace this concept, I know I surely can. We didn't always have full bottles of Heinz ketchup. As Soon as that bottle would get empty, we would put a little bit of water in that bottle, shake it up, and pour that ketchup on hamburgers and french fries. And he tells us that it was our adversity that allowed us to tap into our creativity and give birth to new possibilities. Our adversity allows us to tap into our creativity and give birth to new possibilities. So we don't have to teach our young people how to be successful. We don't have to do that. We just have to teach them not, how to not give up on trying. Even at age 27, I've had many, many failures in my life, but there was always somebody who taught me not to give up on trying. When I walked out of elementary school, tears rolling down my face because the teacher was mean to me, there was a woman waiting for me outside, a woman who had no college degree, but a PhD in life. A woman to wipe my tears away and say, baby, you can do anything you wanna do. And she marched me right back up in that school and told my teacher the same thing, that my child can do anything that he wants to do. So that lady and my father, for that matter, always encouraged me to use my adversity to tap into my creativity and give birth to new possibilities. And that's what I did. So with the potential of the village, I would like to talk about 
the new possibility in which I gave birth to. This is the 16th letter. The 16th letter. The 16th letter. The 16th letter concept focuses on innovation and inspires us to build success and character into ourselves, others, and our community by focusing on words that begin with the letter P. In other words, you can have nothing, nothing happens without planning, persistence, or people. Planning, persistence, and people. It reminds me of the glove theory that my mentor and I talked about. Because when you think about nurturing the village, what nurturing the village pretty much talks about is to care for, look after, take care of, cherish, foster, raise, cultivate. And that's essentially what we want to do. That's essentially what needs to be done. So when I talk about the glove theory, the glove alone has no power. The glove alone is just a glove. But once a person sticks their hand in the glove, exercises their power, then the glove has potential. The glove can now pick up things. The glove can now keep your hand warm from the cold. And if it's a boxing glove, the glove can strike a mighty blow. But unless the person exercises the potential, the glove is nothing. So ladies and gentlemen, in many ways, we are just like the glove. We have all the trappings of a successful person, but without planning, persistence, in other words that begin with the letter P, we are virtually nothing. Now throughout the event, you all have received the envelope, is that correct? If you have an envelope, can you please raise it, in, raise it up in the air so I can see your envelope? Now what I would like to encourage you all to do is get a pen out if you all have a pen a writing utensil, something to write with. To yourself, identify a word that begins with the 16th letter. Not only a word that begins with the 16th letter, but a word that you can put into action in your life in order to nurture your village. I want you to take that word that begins with the 16th letter. If it's passion, write passion on that card. If it's perseverance, write perseverance on that card. Write a note to yourself about what you can do using the 16th letter in order to nurture your village. Because it's all about what you put into it. While you're doing this, I'm reminded of a story of the young boy who was at his, um, him and his mom were at the zoo. And he was walking through the zoo. He was holding a yellow balloon. He was holding a yellow balloon and he was walking and running and walking and running. And mom said, stop before you trip. And he would stop and look at mom. Then he would keep running and walking and running. And she said, boy, stop before you trip. And he would turn and look at mom. Then he kept running and running until he tripped. And he fell and he let go of his balloon and it went up in the air. And he was sad that his yellow balloon had went into the air. So he convinced mom to take him to the stand and he wanted to get another balloon. And he told the guy working the stand, he said, give me an orange balloon because my yellow balloon went in the air when I let it go. And the guy said, well, son, I'm sorry to tell you, but the orange balloon will do the same thing. He said, well, I don't want an orange one. Give me a blue balloon because my blue balloon, if you give me a blue balloon, I know it won't go in the air if I let it go. And he said, son, I'm sorry. If you let it go, it'll go in the air too. He said, okay, okay, you're trying to be funny. Give me a black balloon. You give me a black balloon. I know that balloon is going to stay put. If I let it go, it's not going to go in the air. And finally, the guy working the stand told him, he said, young fella, it's not the color of the balloon that makes it rise. It's what we put inside. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we have to tell ourselves. It's not what we do in our community that makes it rise. It's what we put inside. What will we invest in? What do you plan to do? So as I close my TED talk, I ask you, I ask you all, what vision would you have for your village? What dream would you have for your village if you knew that that dream would come true. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the potential to make a radical difference in Flint, Michigan. It all starts with the 16th letter. So as I take my seat, I want you all to remember this quote. Stars don't struggle to shine. Rivers don't struggle to flow. Fires don't struggle to burn. And winds don't struggle to blow. Whatever you are called to do, comes naturally to you. Thank you.